I, I started off telling you that you know, everything is great about this chemistry. The electrochemistry is fantastic. You can discharge and charge at very low over potentials. If that was true, then what you would essentially have is a box curve. Right? You would have discharge running flat and then charging running flat. Right? And that's not what is observed. You actually have this rising ion. And, and, and so we want to try and see why exactly this is happening. And so uh, we put we put a picture together based on essentially two experimental observations. Uh, the observations are the following. So what we have here is is a is a discharge curve, uh, discharge and charge curve, and and we, we, and, and and IBM uh, were able they were able to track what are the gas products involved. So initially the dominant reaction was oxygen. So you charge up, you, you predominantly get oxygen, but then in the end you get some CO2. So uh, CO2 can come from two possible ways. You have carbon on the electrode. You have carbon in the electrolyte. So there are two possible ways. And using isotopic labeling, they basically showed that it seems to be half and half. So it seems to be half uh, from the electrode and half from the electrolyte. And, and the other piece of evidence is this electron per oxygen, which can give a good handle for what is happening in the chemistry. When you discharge, you have almost perfect chemistry. When you charge, you start to deviate out. And so this is sort of the picture that we put together. Uh, the picture is the following. So when you finish discharging this battery, what you have is you have essentially lithium peroxide that you form. Most of it is lithium peroxide. But you have, you, have, you have one problem, which is that when you have lithium peroxide and carbon, it's, it's exothermic to go to lithium carbonate. So you have a thin film of lithium carbonate. This is sort of well known in the battery community. But in this context, it's it sort of uh, it sort of was not well established. So you form this you form this lithium carbonate layer, thin lithium carbonate layer. But what's really interesting is that when you try and uh, when you try and charge the battery, you sort of have this rising tail. And what we attributed this to was there is some decomposition process that sort of coats the film, coats the film on top of this lithium peroxide. And so what that what what that means is that you have a constant current boundary condition. So you have you have to drive the reaction at a certain rate, but the number of reactive sites have gone down. So you have to mandatorily rise the potential to drive the reaction faster in the sites that you have. So along the sites that are on the sites that are accessible, you need to drive the rate at a faster point. So basically, you have this rising tail, and it's always good to take any story and, and put that into into mathematics. So um, what, this is what we did: we, we turned this into a mathematical model, and then you can compare against uh, against flat electrode measurements, uh, and then what you see exactly. Is that the features are sort of reproduced? So what what the what what the model predicts is that uh, is that there's rise in rise in the in the potential is essentially due to this decomposition reaction. So you, you sort of close some of these active sites, and so you have this rising potential until you get to a point where you have lithium carbonate, and so you have to get that off. So you have to get that off, and that gets off at about 4.5 volts. So this sort of is is where the field 